Okay. Hi, everybody. Today is October the 25th, and you missed this lesson, unfortunately, so I'm going to give it to you online. Hopefully, you find this okay. Uh, we're going to start today with rearranging formulas. The formula for finding the perimeter of a rectangle can be found using the following formula, where P is the perimeter, L is the length, and W is the width. There's the formula there. If a rectangle has a perimeter of 46 meters, let's underline that and call it P for perimeter, and a length of 15 meters, we'll underline that and call it L for length, what is the width? Okay, well according to our method one that we've seen before, we substitute and rearrange. So we're gonna write the formula P equals two bracket L plus W. Circle the variable we're trying to solve for right away and substitute in the other two variables that were given in the question. So 46 is equal to two times 15 plus W. So far so good. Now up here I'm going to remind you all that, whoops, we're going to be using SAMDEB to help us figure out which operations to undo first. So it looks like in SAMDEB brackets actually are last in the order of operations. So we don't want to touch this bracket yet, we want to do that last. Even though there's an addition inside, I know, an addition comes first, Brackets, however, come last. So if I see a bracket, I'm not touching it to the last thing. I see this 2, and 2 is being multiplied by W. I know that because there's no plus or minus here. If it's being multiplied by W, then the first thing we should do is divide both sides by 2. 46 divided by 2 is 23. 23 is equal to 15 plus W. Now that the 2's gone, the brackets don't matter anymore. So we now have an addition here between the 15 and the W. And to get rid of an addition, we subtract. 23 subtract 15 is 8. 8 equals W. So that's method 1. Method 2 goes something like this. We take the formula again. This time, we're not going to substitute anything yet. We're going to rearrange first. So we need to get W by itself, but we're going to follow the same steps as we did back here. So we want to get rid of this times 2 first by dividing both sides by 2. This is what that would look like. P divided by 2 equals L plus W. So far, so good. Next, we need to get rid of this plus L length. And the only way to do that is to subtract. So P divided by 2 minus L is equal to W. Once you've got your formula worked out for W, you can then go ahead and substitute 46 for P and 15 for length and solve for W. W will equal 8 again. Okay? So therefore, the width is 8 meters done. All right, let's try a few of these now in number two. So in number two, we don't have a choice. We can't solve when we have nothing to substitute in. So we can't use method number one. We have to use method number two. We're trying to isolate for x. So I'd like you to circle the variable we're trying to isolate and move things away from that x. I notice that x is in brackets again, and it's being multiplied by four. So we need to get rid of that 4 first. m divided by 4 equals x plus y. Now I need to get x by itself by subtracting y. So m divided by 4 minus y is equal to x. b. First thing I see here, x is being circled. I see that x is being added to b in brackets, however multiplied by h and divided by 2. So the first thing I'm going to do here is leave those brackets alone and multiply both sides by 2. So right now I have x plus b in brackets times h equals 2 times a. Next thing I'm going to do is get rid of this times h by dividing both sides by h. 
x plus b is equal to 2a over h. And the last thing, the brackets don't matter anymore, so x by itself should equal 2a divided by h. How do we get rid of a plus b again? We subtract b from the other side. You guessed it. Good. So there's a and b done for you. c and d. c is actually a little trickier. C, I'm going to circle and star because that's a good candidate for distributive property. Let me show you why. If I do this quickly, we would get A divided by P equals 1 plus R times X. Then A divided by P minus 1 equals R times X. And if we're solving for X, we need to divide by R. So this whole thing is going to look pretty silly, but bear with me is a over p minus 1 divided by r. Ooh, that doesn't look very nice. It's a correct answer, but it's not looking very good. So I'm going to give you an alternative way to do this. Instead of this method, we're actually going to multiply the p into the bracket. So p times 1 is p. p times rx is prx, like so. That's using the distributive property. And if that's the case, and we're still trying to solve for x, then we need to subtract this p first. a take away p equals prx. And divide both sides by pr. Well, that looks a lot better to me. a subtract p divided by pr. A lot nicer and a lot cleaner. You choose. Either one is correct. This one just looks a little better formatting-wise. Okay, last question. A is equal to 3 times B minus X. In this case, we don't have an extra term in front of the X, so I don't mind if you divide by 3 here. A divided by 3 is equal to B subtract X. That's a good first step. But the problem is, I see negative X here. And if I'm going to be clever about this, I don't want to know what negative x is. I want to know what positive x is. So I'm going to take that whole term, negative x, and move it across the equal sign. The reason I'm going to do that is to change this negative x to a positive x. So now we have x plus, whoops, <laughs> a over 3 is equal to b. x plus a divided by 3 equals b. But now, the x still isn't by itself, so we need to subtract this term on the other side. x is equal to b, subtract a over 3. And that's your answer for that one. I hope that helps. I hope that it lets you do your homework on the back. All the one questions on the back are for homework tonight, please. So that's it for now.